So here we are. But where is here? When I say this to coworkers and friends, they literally will stop for a moment and then go, ooh, we are here. But where is here? I could have easily written out I'm sitting next to the writing window overlooking this beautiful waking forest on a 32 degree morning. But I didn't do that. It's not truly the point I'm trying to make or the picture that I'm trying to draw. The question is, where is here? Physically, we're present. Mentally, where is here? Although I'm writing while receiving energy from the universe, my real here is actually everywhere but here. With so many expectations today, my heart won't stop planning things out. My emotions don't want to leave the forest, yet I know there has to be an accomplishment. Everywhere but here, which tells my soul to refocus, to get back into the game of what is right now. Daily writing centers every one of us. And then what? Does that take us away from being prepared? The goal should be put on calm. Don't teach yourself to write a story before something happens. Hey, it's Arrow. This is the Daily Mass, a chronological walkthrough in everyday world. I am a daily writer, the silent wolf. I sit on the edge and I just watch. I observe. I listen. I study. And then we get to create a conversation. This is the Daily Mass. The one thing I hear a lot about these days is the high cost of storage. People who use these giant warehouses to put furniture and other items in. Now that the rental space is coming in at nearly half your monthly payment for the house, people are having to give up their storage space inside those four walls. As one friend stated, I didn't want to come across as a hoarder. That's why I rented the storage space. But with the cost reaching unaffordable levels, lives are swiftly changing. My wife and I were deeply dedicated and loyal to this thing called the Swedish death cleaning. If you haven't used it in six months and nobody else in your family wants it, you have to get rid of it. And we were doing really well until we've reached the items that still have sentimental value. Suddenly, everything on the Swedish death cleaning stopped, which the experts say is perfectly normal. My heart goes out to those who are being forced to move away from their storage places. Their life is about to change because it's no longer inside that giant building. Do you sell it? Do you save it or throw it away? With families living together well beyond their 30s, the house is already full and overflowing. When is the time to clear out the closet? We are in a very overcrowded world, and I'm not talking people. I'm talking about items. We keep buying items. Amazon has made it so simple for those items to come to your home. What do we do with the old items? We set them in the corner. We put them in a closet. We put them out in the garage. We don't get rid of it. Now, personally, I struggle with the idea of having a garage sale. And the reason why is because what I think it's worth, nobody's going to pay that price. And if I try to take it to a goodwill, just to relinquish it is one thing. But to really know that it's no longer going to be a part of my life is a very tough thing. It's a mental issue. It really is. It's like the books that I get from these great authors that send them to me. I can't read them all. So what I do is I try to give them all away to people who love these particular subjects or I'll take them to goodwill. But learning how to lead a clean, cleared life is not something that happens overnight. Like I said, my wife and I were doing the Swedish death cleaning. We were doing so well until we got to the sentimental things. Now we have to learn to let go. It's just a thing. It doesn't have a heartbeat. It doesn't think for you. It's not your best friend. It's just a thing. What are you storing inside of your head? In reality, it's costing you energy. It's costing you time to properly heal. We just keep shoving things away. And that's the very reason why I'm a daily writer. I don't want to hold on to it anymore. If I need to get it, then I'll go back into my daily writing. But the thing is, is that I have 30 years of these journals. What am I going to do with them? What I don't want to do is destroy them. Because I've always believed that what we write and what we create isn't for this generation. It's for somebody else who just wants to learn a little bit more. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.